Good morning, everyone. It is 6.30 in the morning and we are here in the office. And by we, I mean me and my loving firefighting husband, Matthew. Um, Matt actually flew in last night and uh, surprised me and I'm so excited because it's not very often when you have a working class family that you get the opportunity to um, take time. So we were able to um, get his shift at the firehouse covered and uh, he's up here now. So really excited. And it's gonna be a crazy day, but a great day because we're gonna make it a great day. And I'm having a cup of coffee. So if you've got a cup of coffee, have one with me and we can dig into kind of the hot topics and news of the day. Um, I just finished a, uh, a Fox News interview. I was on at 5.52 and um, that typically means, and for all the ladies out there, you understand this, you guys can sympathize. It's not like the fellas, y'all can like literally roll out of bed and, you know, zhuzh the hair and, you know, put on a blazer and a shirt and you're done. No, for us women, for us ladies, we gotta roll out of bed, wash our face. Um, shower, hair, makeup, like it's a full blown production. And uh, so when that alarm went off at four o'clock, it was um, early. So I'm gonna be on, uh, on probably coffee cup number eight by the time noon rolls around and then I'll cut it off. But um, yeah, <laughs> uh, it was early, but we were talking about the uh, Iran nuclear deal. That was what, um, my interview was about because as you guys may have heard the um, Biden administration is um, close to a final product on the JCPOA which is the Iran nuclear deal which in theory is supposed to prevent Iran from getting nuclear weapons. Let me tell you why that is the stupidest, stupidest deal on the planet. Not only does this deal make it easier and faster for them to acquire the, the, the material, to produce the material necessary for nuclear weapons, but it provides millions and millions and millions in sanctions relief, which then expedites their ability to produce the weapon. Now, be clear that Iran has no desire to join the international community in a kumbaya, let's be productive citizens here. They want to wipe Israel off the map. Case in point, they are the number one state sponsor of terror. No joke, number one state sponsor of, chair, of terror. They fund groups like Hezbollah and Hamas. Hezbollah is their number one proxy in the region. Now, I just got back from Israel about a month ago, and I had the opportunity to go travel to the Lebanon border uh, that they share with Israel. And there was a tunnel that took Hezbollah terrorists about 10 to 12 years to dig. Their goal was to dig underneath the border. Um, Israel border control is extraordinarily impressive and tight, and they knew the Israelis knew that they were building this tunnel and they had a whole plan. They were monitoring it the whole time. Um, so they, the, the terrorists dig this tunnel underneath to try to then send a bunch of terrorists through onto the Israeli side, basically uh, rape, murder, pillage, wipe out the this town that's right there on the border. And then they were gonna plant their flag there, record a video and say, we have captured Israel. We have taken them out and they were gonna use it as propaganda. Well, I had the opportunity to actually go into this tunnel, like actually went down into the Hezbollah terror, terror tunnel. This was a month ago in, in Israel on the border of Lebanon. And I got to see exactly how they, how they dug this tunnel, how they built it, you know, the time, the effort, the resources, everything that they had to put into this. And somebody said it so perfectly. You feel like you can't breathe because you're being suffocated by hate. Can you imagine the hatred and disdain that you would have to have for someone to invest that kind of time and resources into building a tunnel so that you can go commit 
murder and t acts of terror. I mean, that's just one example of countless amounts. Of, but point is, Hezbollah operates at the full discretion of Iran. They are the number one state sponsor of terror. They are in bed with Russia. In fact, in this deal, Russia is the mediator of this deal. And when you look at the cast of characters, and I talked about this on the interview, when you look at the cast of characters that the Biden administration has put in place to negotiate this deal, it's the exact same crew that was from the, the Obama administration. Now, Biden is so bad that he makes the, the Obama administration look good. Like that's how, when you think that it can't get worse, it does. And the fact that they are so close to having enough material of enriched uranium, they already have the missile capability, they have ICBMs. This is a very dangerous situation because just, don't forget, just a couple weeks ago, the Iran took credit for shooting a missile at an American consulate in Iraq. They took credit. And we're still at the negotiating table with them? What? It makes no sense. It makes absolutely no sense. Which again points to why this administration, continual, continual movement to one, deny reality and facts, but then they, they go begging for oil from Iran, from an Ayatollah who shouts death to Israel, death to America. Um, there was a terrorist attack that was foiled. Um, they were targeting American citizens. I mean, this is all recent news. This is insane. And when you look at how far their global footprint is, Hezbollah and Iran, you know, by extension, we see terrorists linked to Hezbollah coming across the southwest border, coming across the southwest border. This is verified. This is fact. This is truth. And it's just so, it's so crazy that we're even at the negotiating table. But what makes it even worse is that Russia is the designated mediator in all of this. Russia, the, the federation that is murdering women and children, that has a crazed dictator, the same one that just recently had one of their lead Kremlin representatives say that the United States should repatriate Alaska to Russia. This is who is leading negotiations for the Biden administration with Iran, it's crazy. It's dangerous for not just the region, for the world. It is a bad, bad deal. So we need to oppose this at all costs. And as you guys know, when we talk about all the things that are going wrong and all the craziness, if you're angry, that's great. But anger without action, that's just political theater. So what we did was we got um, on board with several of our colleagues, about 50, 50 of our colleagues, and we sent a congressional uh, a congressional inquiry to the administration and actually put forward a resolution condemning the actions of the Biden administration, making it clear that the Biden administration does not speak for America in this regard and that we do not appreciate that this cast of characters, remember these were also the ones that paid in pallets of cash to the, to the Ayatollah a while back. Um, you guys probably remember that. Um, that this is, this is dangerous. This is dangerous for the United States. It's dangerous for the world. This is not a good deal. Um, uh, Representative Jim Banks and Secretary Mike Pompeo, um, they have been very vocal about this as well. So we're really proud to put action behind our criticism because that's really important. Remember, anger without action is political theater. And I know that we see a lot of that. So uh, we always try to put our money where our mouth is. Other things going on, of course, uh, we are regularly tracking with uh, what is happening in Ukraine. President Zelensky addressed Congress. I was in the room. I watched the, um, I watched the presentation. It was gut wrenching, heartbreaking. Um, listen, I know that you guys want to talk about uh, Ukraine, and there's been a lot of talk about what a no fly zone would mean, and I am. Um, I'm just gonna lay this out really quickly. For people who say that we need to close the skies down, and there's a lot of uh, discussion amongst Congress about should we impose a no-fly zone, should we not? Let me tell you exactly where I'm at. I do not support a, a no-fly zone because I know what it means. 
And I know what it would mean to thousands of American families who would be seeing their sons and daughters and mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters being deployed into Ukraine and they would be shooting down Russian jets. A no-fly zone means American boots on the ground. American boots on the ground, undeniably World War III. You think Russia would hesitate in one second? And this is not because of intimidation from Russia. This is, I do not believe that Americans should be engaging on the ground with Russia. That's, that, that's, this is, this is not our war. And um, there's a lot of things that we're doing, providing humanitarian aid, providing bullets, providing military weaponry, continuing to send Javelin missiles, stingers. These are things that we can do. But I also have very deep reservations about the fact that Congress is so willing to go try to shut down the skies over Ukraine, but is completely oblivious to what is happening on our southwest border. Our southwest border is being overrun. It is invasion. We are approaching 200,000 people this month alone. This is incredibly complicated and dangerous. And I think for everyone who thinks that they were an MD last year with COVID and a constitutional lawyer the year before that, and now they're a foreign policy expert, recognize that there are so many things going on that sometimes it's okay not to have a a forward opinion and I'm, re I'm referencing all of our crazy trolls who think that they know everything about everything and it's great that they have an opinion but you don't know what you don't know and what I can tell you sitting on Homeland Security having sat in these briefings these these classified briefings the um, the months leading up to what has occurred there is so many things that aren't even forward facing, that the public won't know for a while, that we do not want to engage in a military engagement. No fly zone, absolutely not, no American troops on the ground. So um, I just wanna make sure that my position is clear on this and I wanted to explain why I believe a no fly zone is dangerous. So um, if you have any questions about that, feel free to uh, drop in some, some comments or questions. And then as far as what else is going on, um, it's been a crazy week of, of votes. Uh, I have had nonstop, uh, I've been averaging, I think 14 meetings a day in addition to um, committee. Uh, I sit on Homeland Security, House Agriculture, and the Select Committee on the Economy. So we are running from sunup to sundown and then some, and it's, uh, it's pretty crazy. Oh, um, I forgot to mention this omnibus that passed last week. You know, I voted against it. I can't support an omnibus bill that's $1.5, $1.7 trillion that has earmarks and everything in it. So I, I can do a whole segment on omnibus and all the insane garbage that was in it and clarify any question. You know, Todd, I actually just saw your question in here. So Todd on here, who it looks like he's a firefighter, which again, my, my firefighter husband is here and he's actually running around here in um, one, of, one of our department shirts, um, did Congress vote themselves a 20% raise? And I feel like I need to do a separate video on this. No, no. There has been no salary increase for members of Congress in well over 10 years, probably more. Um, there is not a salary increase for members of Congress. What Nancy Pelosi did was she put in a 21% increase into members' representational allowances. What that is, is the salaries for staff and you know rent for their district offices and their basic operation. You get a, month, a yearly stipend to run your offices and that money goes to that. Members do not get a salary increase. That needs to be clearly stated. Um, I still, oppose, I still opposed it, I voted against it, of course. Um, but what is crazy about all this is that if you get a 21% increase, right, in your, your operations budget and you don't use it, even if, and this is the case if you, even without the increase, how it works is if you, at the end of the year, 
and this is why government is so messed up and why it needs to change. If at the end of the year you haven't used your entire operating budget and you say, I'm going to give back $200,000 or whatever it may be, $100,000 to the treasury to reduce the national debt. Okay, sure. You think it's going there. No, 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 no. This is how crafty these swamp creatures are. When you give money back from your operations budget, it actually goes to Nancy Pelosi. On what planet would I ever give Nancy Pelosi any more money? I wouldn't. So just be aware for everyone who is talking about members getting a 21% increase, that's not true. That's not, that's, that's fake news. And every single time that we perpetuate bad information, it, it ruins the credibility of our cause and our cause is to take our country back. So we really, really, really need to do homework. Please do not share bad information. I get really frustrated with that. And um, so yeah, that's uh, Todd, I hope that answers your question. I know a lot of people have been asking about it. I feel like I need to do a whole separate video on just that one issue. So um, there's that. And again, I oppose the omnibus bill. I oppose the 21% increase. I oppose, I oppose a lot, pretty much everything. And um, the thing that really should, really, really should make people angry is the fact that um, there was nearly 3,000 earmarks in that omnibus bill, 3,000 earmarks. Nancy Pelosi got her park in San Francisco. Um, $40 million went to the Kennedy Center. Why? I don't know. Um, just crazy. Um, it's, it's wild. But yeah, Todd, saw your comment. Appreciate you asking. Um, let me see. Crown Act. This is what we're voting on today. I'm in here reading the bill because, and actually, let me, you're going to see my very messy desk. All right, so look at this. This is, this is the bill. And as I told you guys, I read the bill. So this morning, it's 6.30 in the morning. And I am going to... Be going through it again and let me tell you what the Crown Act is and I know my my, my desk is a disaster um, the Crown Act I'm gonna read this to you guys because this is the craziness that we have to vote on okay all right this bill would prevent discrimination against I'm reading exactly what this does this bill that we're voting on today would prevent discrimination against an individual because of their hair texture or style. Guys, this bill that costs $4 million, $4 million would discriminate would prevent discrimination against an individual because of their hair texture or style. This is the garbage that we are dealing with. This is the garbage that we are dealing with. Um, really, really frustrating. Of course, I'm gonna be voting against this, but this is the bullshit that we have to vote on. This is the stuff that, that happens every day that people don't realize what is happening, that our country is being chipped away and taken away bit by bit. And people are so distracted with the stuff that doesn't, that doesn't matter, that, that, that that's, they're so distracted. And this is what is crazy. This is what is costing money. This is what one day you're going to wake up and you're gonna have a lawsuit because someone can claim as a protected class that you don't like their hairstyle. What? Like, this is, this, is, this is what is so frustrating to me and this is why it's so important to read the bills. And this is why it's so important to be present and be voting in person, not proxying. And I could do a whole nother thing on proxying. Um, but yeah, this is what's crazy. Um, guys, it's, it's wild. It's absolutely wild, um, absolutely wild that this is in the middle of what we've got going on, gas prices through the roof, um, people can't afford to basically live, 
supply chain is more broken than ever. You've got price of food and fuel and fiber, you know, everything, fibers and everything. Um, everything is through the roof. I mean, you go to buy a shirt, it is through the roof. You go to buy groceries, through the roof. Americans under this administration are paying $300 more a month on average just to live. And it's, it's crazy. Um, Cynthia, I see your comment. Guess tattoos will be next, right? I'm telling you, we are so crazy. And, and by we, I mean Congress. Congress is so crazy that they are putting legislation at a time when Americans can't even afford to live because we've got $5 a gallon gas and they are worried about people being discriminated against because of their hairstyle. Absolutely crazy, absolutely crazy. Um, this bill is introduced by Representative Watson Coleman of New Jersey. There are 116 co-sponsors, 116 co-sponsors. I don't, I don't, I, I don't understand it. I mean, this is, this is going to, this is going to do more that in, in terms of the, creating division and race issues. I mean, this is, this is insane. <sighs> yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. I know y'all have a lot of questions. I'm going to go through because we're coming up on, on a lot. Um, let me see. Um, uh, Colleen truckers. Um, you guys know, I already support the convoy. Um, I think that there's a lot of incredible, brave men and women that, um, are participating in this. I haven't had the opportunity to get out to, um, where they're staged and they haven't come really anywhere near Capitol Hill. There's, it's just, they're incredibly far away right now. Um, and I don't even have time to really eat, let alone or do anything um, beyond my committee hearings and voting. And I don't proxy vote. I refuse to proxy vote. I think if you are elected to do a job, you absolutely have to show up. And um, I know that several of our Florida truckers that were running that operation, they actually are back in Florida. Um, so I'm gonna be meeting with my truckers back in Florida. Make no mistake, I support the truckers convoy, um, but this is there's some really bad stuff going on right now in Capitol Hill, and I cannot and will not entrust my constitutional duties to another member. Um, so, I, I have to stay here and fight garbage like this and make sure that we're not sending American troops to Ukraine or authorizing a nuclear deal brokered by Russia. There's a lot of stuff going on, but make no mistake, fully support the truckers. We have been um, actually, again, talking about mandates. Um, it's, somewhere on, it's somewhere here on my desk. We... By we, I mean um, Representative Bill Arrakis and I, we actually dropped a bill last week. Um, Small Government Act eliminates all mandates. All mandates go away under this bill, um, and that's what we're working towards. I think we will get there, truthfully. Um, but again, this is us working smarter to actually get the desired end result. And... Um, I'm, I'm really proud of everybody who has been participating in the convoy and um, I think it's I think it's good that people are paying attention. I wish the me mainstream media would cover it more. They are not, that's frustrating. But um, just know that there's a lot of support on Capitol Hill for the truckers and the convoy. Um, let me see. I know there's a bunch of people with questions. Um, a lot of people, again, asking what is going on, why aren't Republicans doing something. Um, guys, we are seven votes shy of the majority. When you talk about what are Republicans doing, what we are doing is exercising our constitutional authority to the maximum that we can. But make no mistake, 
This institution, institution being Congress, is run off of majorities. The majority controls everything. They control the agenda. They, can, they control what bills go to the floor. They control what passes. That is why you don't see impeachment on the floor. That's why you don't see um, common sense legislation like restarting the Keystone Pipeline getting on the floor. We use influence as much as we can to get better outcomes because let me tell you, if you saw where some of these bills start, you would absolutely lose your mind the way that I, I feel like sometimes I do. Um, it's crazy, absolutely crazy. Um, so there is a strong push to take the house back. <clears throat> Having a cup of coffee. You were just live. I am. Oh, okay. <laughs> my husband's like, "Are you okay?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm just having a cup of coffee." You never stop talking. <laughs> yeah, my husband just said, "You never stop talking." Classic. Gotta love our husbands. Let me tell you. Um, so, this place is run off of this place is run off of majority votes. So, if we don't show up, we don't get to oppose and and really do our job of representing our constituents back home and um so uh seven votes shy of the majority that's what we are seven votes shy of the majority it's really really important that we get the majority back because we can't pass or stop anything until we get the majority so for everyone who's always frustrated about why aren't republicans stopping this it's because republicans can't because the Republicans are in the minority, seven votes shy. This is the smallest margin of minority majority in Congress since World War II. The Democrats don't have a mandate to run wild and go ultra liberal left. They should be doing things to try to bring Republicans in, but they haven't. They haven't. And if you look at poll numbers, they're tanking. So it's kind of crazy. I think things look very good, very optimistic for this November. Um, if you follow our other page, you know what we're doing to take the house back. And if you want to inquire, go ahead. Uh, but uh, that's what's going on. Um, Kimberly, I don't care about hairstyle. My husband and I would be happy to have people show up and work and stay in the job. Kimberly, holy smokes, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, in our family business, we were commercial sandblasters and in the monument business. and. Um, if we got people who would just show up and do their job, it was a good day. People have no, people who have never run a business have no idea the challenges that our small business owners face and just getting people to show up. I mean, if you show up, that that's, that's a good day. Um, and I talk to our small business owners all the time and they're like, listen, we're going to, we're going to fold up. I actually, good friend of mine. He and his wife have been in the barbecue business for 40 years and um, they actually shut their doors and closed down their restaurant because they could not rely on help. There was no good help. And when you've been doing it for 40 years and you guys, you and your wife or you and your husband are showing up, doing every job under the sun and you cannot find any help and then that gets old. And so it's not a sustainable, um, it's not a sustainable lifestyle to, to continue that, that way. And so, you know, they, they folded, they decided they were going to shut down the restaurant and keep in mind, this is was this was a restaurant. This was a barbecue joint that was like an institution. It was dedicated to firefighters and first responders and military and it was, um, incredible. And it's really sad because that's the state of things. Um, Kim, what about those that lost their jobs because of the, the vaccine mandate? Exactly. Exactly, Kim. I'm telling you, this is this is what is so ridiculous um, now that they're talking about hairstyle. Um, uh, Enid asked, what about the daylight savings bill? Um, Floridians as a whole, I can tell you, support this bill. <laughs> Um, 
Florida has had this bill at the state legislature in Tallahassee many, many years running. And um, so Floridians actually do support this bill. Um, I know we got a lot of people from around the country on here. Um, and so just so you guys have a point of reference, a lot of Floridians are in favor of this. Hey, Matt, come say hi. Matt's gonna come say hi. Hello. Say, hey guys. <laughs> he's heading off to the gym. Heading off. Um, but yeah, just so you guys know, um, the Senate, they passed the, um, daylight savings bill and, um, I believe we'll be taking it up in the house. I have no idea when that's all at the discretion of Nancy Pelosi and Steny Hoyer. But, um, just so y'all know, um, a lot of Floridians do support it wherever you are in the country. If you support it or not, drop me a note. I'd be happy to hear from you. Um, Alan. So Congress can't balance the checkbook, but a 21% pay increase. We, Alan, again, we didn't get a pay increase. I'm sorry. I know that goes against a lot of people's narrative, but that's a fact. Members of Congress did not get a salary increase. Their operating budget got an increase. And like I said, for those that are like, well, we need to make sure that the people don't accept it. There is no, you don't have an option it just it happens and then when people give it back it doesn't go back to the treasury it goes to nancy pelosi the way that the system has been designed and it's been this way for years and years and years and it's what needs to change and we're working to change it is you can't even give it back to the treasury it goes to the speaker of the house currently serving another swampy detail that people don't like to acknowledge um and how about a proposal for, oh no, I don't want to be Speaker of the House. That sounds like a terrible job. Woo. Steve, Nancy Pelosi never gets enough. You're 100% right. And they were upset that they didn't get COVID relief money. Keep in mind that there's $800 billion in COVID relief money that has not been spent to date. And the Democrats are still asking for more? I don't think so. Yeah, we're gonna fight that one um, real, real hard because it's not their money, it's your money. And they treat they treat the money up here like monopoly money. That to me is what is so frustrating. Um, Paula, anyone asking about the border, talking about the border, we're at war. Yes, Paula, I sit on Homeland Security. I have jurisdiction over the border. I've been there several times. I'm going back a couple times this year. And I hear from the Border Patrol agents every single day, not a BS exaggeration. I actually text with our Border Patrol agents that are boots on the ground all the way up into leadership all along the Southwest border from Texas to the most Southern part in McAllen, all the way through to El Paso and then up into Arizona. And I've even talked to some of them that are in California. Guys, the border, the border is hot. The border is what I know there's a lot of stuff going on and I know everyone has an issue that they are really, really passionate about, but the border is killing us. We are being invaded at our border. There are narcotics pouring across our border, landing in our communities. This is an invasion. There is no other way to put it. There are individuals on the international terrorist watch list that are coming through the border. The border, the border, the border. If you're talking about anything other than the border, you're doing something wrong because the border is what is going to be the biggest national security crisis that we've ever had. If people knew what is happening down there, and, and I am so angry with media for not covering it. I am so angry at them for not continually being down there and showing people literally walking across. And this administration not only just lets it happen, they encourage it. They encourage it through these programs. And it's, I'm telling you, the 118th Congress, oh my gosh, this is going to be, we're, we're, we are impeaching. We are impeaching a few people. But Secretary Mayorkas, that guy, he is the most, that man is a traitor. He's, he has willfully allowed our border to be overrun 
and he has lied about it and he has called members disrespectful for questioning him. He called me disrespectful and rude. And I actually wear that as a, a badge of honor because he allows for our borders to be overrun and he lies to the American people and he, he continues to, to manipulate and turn his back on our border patrol agents. Absolutely. I, mm. It's gonna be a bad, a bad time for him when Republicans take the house back. Don't get me started on that. Um, um, Mary, why can't we charge these people? Mary, we don't have the majority. That is why. Um, let me see. I'm reading some of y'all's questions. Joan, did Russia negotiate with Iran on our behalf? Was there a nuclear deal? Uh, actually, so Joan, um, if you're still listening, that's kind of what I was talking about at the beginning. I just did a Fox News interview this morning about this, and um, the Biden administration is restarting talks and has been negotiating. They are using Russia as the mediator for this negotiation. We never should be back at the negotiating table anyway for this deal. It's a bad deal for everyone except for Iran. And um, yeah, so this is this is another situation where you're gonna see really bad things at taxpayer expense. Um, and that's why we're fighting it tooth and nail. And yes, Russia is the mediator in this. Um, let me see. College jab mandates, stop them. Yes, uh, again, I mean, that's why when people, when people talk about how they're fighting the mandates, one, nine times out of 10, these are people that are proxy voting, which to me is a little hypocritical. Um, we are not only fighting them down in our own home districts, but across the country, but we have introduced a bill that will be, um, because Nancy Pelosi will never allow it to come to the House floor, um, it will be wrapped up into a package beginning in January that rescinds every single mandate and puts protections in place so that government can never arbitrarily do this again. And we're working through legal to try to find what retroactively we can do to restore some of the um, um, jobs that were lost because of it, because particularly in healthcare, there was the CMS mandate that was not held up by the Supreme Court. So we are 1000% dedicated to this. But again, you have people that talk about this and then they never do anything. We're actually doing something and putting the framework in place that is going to pass the House of Representatives. And um, so this is, this is a huge issue. We're going to continue to work through our state legislatures because a lot of the universities, they get their funding through the state. Lots of issues to navigate there. Um, let me see. Stacy, thankful you don't stop talking. <laughs> I know some people wish I would. Um, let me see. Election integrity questions. Good question, Lisa. Um, will November be a fair election or will it be um, another debacle? Okay. Um, early, early on, on election integrity, there was a group form called the Election Integrity Caucus. This group started identifying some of the issues that were found in Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Arizona. Those were our real big problem children. We went through and um, actually talked to the lawyers that were on scene that witnessed what was going on. In Michigan, it was more voter intimidation than a complete subversion of the constitutional authority that the state legislature has. Um, so we focused primarily on Wisconsin, which, oh my gosh, Wisconsin. Mm. Wisconsin people, you need to call your state legislators. Um, Pennsylvania, Arizona, Georgia. We went through and um, created checklists and started saying, all right, state legislatures, you uh, allowed your elections to be altered unconstitutionally um, by allowing unelected uh, non-state legislature officials to make changes because of COVID. 
um, that was everything from no ID to vote required to vote, mass mail outs of ballots, and counting votes up to 12 days after they um, after the election ended. These state legislatures are critical to this conversation because everyone's talking about you know voter integrity and they talk to Congress when in reality they should be talking to their state legislatures. The states are the constitutional um, members that handle the time and manner and place in which elections are conducted. It's not Congress, it's your state legislator. And if you have not called your state senator and your state representative, and this is a top issue, then you need to call them today and say, what have you done to ensure that our upcoming elections are safe and secure? That is a huge, huge issue that again, I continue to talk about because so many people think that Congress has a major role in elections. We need to get active in our state legislators, legislatures to ensure that our elections are secure. That is where they start and finish. Because if Congress takes over elections, like Nancy Pelosi is trying to do, which you guys have heard me talk about this, they want to nationalize and federalize and publicly finance campaigns. They want to basically trash the United States Constitution and do that. So um, guys, if you have not called your state legislature, if you haven't talked to your state senator or your state house representative, which would be in your state capital, not in the nation's capital, but in your state capital, then you need to do so immediately. Um, there's a litany of things that we are doing in Florida. Florida is a pretty, a pretty reliable state because we have gotten it right by doing it wrong for so many years. I mean, no one can really forget the infamous hanging chads. But one of the things that the state legislature and Governor DeSantis have done is they have implemented a election fraud task force and an election integrity task force to go after the fraud, which is incredible. We have also worked with our county supervisor of elections to ensure that the that there is um, uh, mechanisms in place that basically are redundancies to protect from fraud interference, um, making sure that the signature verifications are done by in-house staff versus these politically um, paid for groups, things that Georgia was doing. They had Stacey Abrams hiring groups to do signature verification, all this kind of stuff. So we actually, again, because anger without action, political theater, and I'm not here to be in uh, an acting role. We're here to get things done. So we have put together an election integrity tour that we will be going to every single one of our counties in our district and showing exactly what steps have been taken at the county level as well as the state level to ensure that when people go to cast their vote in this upcoming election, that it is counted as it is intended to be cast and it is a reliable, actual legal ballot. And so we'll be broadcasting this. I encourage you guys to watch and share and participate. And if you are outside of our district, share it with your representative. Encourage them to do the same thing because I think it will be very in um, eye-opening for people to see what has happened and what needs to happen. So I'm coming up on um, 7.15. We've been at it for about 45 minutes. So I have got to actually get ready for the day. Um, and I just wanna say thank you. Thank you guys for continuing to share our, our message and talk with your friends, your colleagues, your families about what's really going on in Washington because the media does not tell you what is going on in Washington. And as someone who is seeing this firsthand every single day, who is first in the door and last to leave, we see it all. And I think it's so important that you guys see what I'm seeing because the only way we fix this is as a team. One team, one mission, taking our country back. I will go through and um, answer as many questions as I can throughout the day. Um, it's a crazy, crazy day. My days are wild and we will be doing a behind the scenes about what actually will, you'll come with me through the day to see what goes on. But, um, until then keep the faith, keep the faith. Just know that there are hardworking patriots that are going to keep fighting, not for a political party, but what's best for our country. 
because we're Americans first and we are fighting to put America first. So take care. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And uh, like I said, I'll answer as many questions as I can in the comments. And if I don't talk to you this weekend, have a great weekend. Take care. God bless.